So just to kind of build up on the whole dual DC thing we just talked about is, is give one of the real world deployments we've got. One of our customers has got four data centers. Uh, and these are these are loosely stretched into kind of latency pairs. So so these two are latency close, these two are latency close, and then obviously these ones are latency far. When we say latency far, it's actually about 10 millisecond kind of round trip, and these ones here are I think they're one to two millisecond round trip. <clears throat> so then we have our cluster in each of the DCs, as you would expect. And then as we talked about, you know, you've got the your compute with your proxies. Um, uh, in, in view of time, I won't do it on all of them, but you've got your compute and your proxies uh, and with your VMs here, because they're accessing the local proxy, the local proxy is, is kind of latency aware of where the, where the correct I.O. should go to, your I.O. is going to the local DC here. <clears throat> now, we don't do this in terms of location aware, so if this, if, this, if this cluster happens to be a bit busy, it could be that the local, the quickest latency is actually across to the latency sensitive partner or well, the latency close partner, sensitive is the wrong word. Um, very rarely it'll be across there, something's gone wrong if it's having to go across there, but it could go across there. So then our writes are, are kind of distributed, again as we talked, uh, our write comes into here, we do the, the latency local um, acknowledgement. Again, the writes are sent kind of synchronously across uh, both locations, uh, and all we're doing is we're waiting for one of these to respond, so we've got the quorum, the majority set on that. <clears throat> From the first cluster. Then. Not from the proxy. Okay. So because, because of this, when you've got ESX hosts over here, um, actually it doesn't matter, VMware today, I believe VMware are the only one with the ratified stretch clusters, but you, in theory this could be Hyper-V, you know, Zen, whatever. <coughs> um, you, this allows you to vMotion or obviously an HA cluster across the sites uh, and do an HA failover. So if I lost this site, VM simply just power up because then they're accessing this proxy, which access this machine, uh, and then then detects that this is where the locally the local data is. In the event of losing this, obviously we've got uh, we've lost this site. Data will get rebuilt down here. We now we now do have kind of a latency long drift, but actually we've got done a complete cluster failover. Complete, I'd say seamless, but we know it's an HA failure, so there's a fail there's an HA mechanism to recover that back up with. <coughs> We maintain operations, and now all we've got is a, is a, is a, a kind of a, a long latency on the right acknowledgement. So that's, that's how we can do multi-site from that perspective. Um, put these back so they're in as they were. The other thing we can do is, um, because we've got the different policies on a VDisk level, we can, take, uh, we can target the, the foreign data center uh, and say, I want to clone this VDisk, give it completely separate policies uh, in terms of where to store the data. So then you can have a complete clone of this data, and as writes come in, clearly this isn't a copy of the data, this is as new writes go into it, they will go into the local, uh, again, latency local data center. So here I can have a production workload up here, uh, and a dev workload down here, um, and, and they're complete kind of zero copy clones of each other, with almost near instantaneous cloning and snapshotting of the production data uh, without affecting the performance of production, because all your reads and writes happen here, all your reads and writes happen down here. Did you say you could have a stretch cluster, a VM stretch cluster between the two close latency items? Mm -hmm. But you're not you're not actually doing synchronous replication between the two. You're doing yeah because you're doing H block replication. It's not synchronous replication. Why not? We we don't well, H block we don't acknowledge. My, my understanding it goes to the quorum. So exactly. Whatever the first quorum comes back. Exactly. But we we tell it the quorum. So we in our data center aware policy, we say you must write data in three locations. Yeah, One, I two, understand three. That. I understand so the quorum will only yeah, acknowledge back two. to the application once I've written to these two. But any one so of those two, not just those two, any one of those two is a quorum. That's what he said, right? No, it's two out of three. I understand. Yes, any of the two, two out of those three yes. is a quorum. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's what you said. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. So if, if for some reason I had some issues over here yeah. and my quorum was down here, yeah. absolutely. But then it's not synchronously replicating between the two sites that are low latency. If there's a problem, synchronous replication is broken. And the data's not in the same place. It's not in both of those places anymore. It's but then that's, what, that's, where we have, places that's where we have the kind of, the, in terms of the, the whole mechanism, and these guys might do a better job of explaining it, the whole mechanism of making sure that the reads and the writes are from the most up-to-date version. We try best effort to guarantee that it is synchronously replicated across the two closest ones. But now, if the closest one is down, you synchronously wait for the, the long distance one. Yeah. So it kind of dynamically adjusts based on liveness. And uh, <coughs> replication. 
And if the other one is down, if you have not written to it, it is recorded in pages. Yeah. And then in the background, it's re-replicated to make sure that, live, that the RF property is guaranteed by the system. And so a lot of things that happen even in the background yeah. as okay. much as they do in the foreground. So we're not, we're not, when we don't break the replication there, you know, it's the same thing as if you had, a, you know, two site synchronous replication and you lost the storage system on one side, you'd effectively broken the replication. Yeah. We don't break that replication. Yeah. yeah. So the synchronous replication that you're, you're, you state, I wouldn't necessarily call it synchronous replication, but maybe it's semantics. Mm -hmm. I never call it synchronous, but I don't ever interject. No, <laughs> synchronous replication. I, I personally always refle uh, re refer to it as half sync, half async. Now, which is sync, which is async is totally up to how the system kind of uh, so, you know, uh, figures out that uh, liveness information. Synchronous replication from a storage perspective implies that data is being mirrored between two storage systems. That's and, what, and if there's that, not being mirrored, then synchronous replication is not active. That's what we guarantee. It's synchronous between any yeah, two out of the, the three. the same two is the problem. That's, but that, yes. but that's also the problem we're solving, because you're limited no, I understand, to I understand two sites. I understand solution. I understand. I like yeah. what you're doing, but it's mm -hmm. not what I would call synchronous replication. So the, the solution to there is to get away with the VMware restriction, which is that I can only stretch my cluster across two sites, and I can't stretch it necessarily across a high latency link. If I had my VMware cluster stretched across all four sites, that would solve the problem. So actually we're, we're working around other limitations there. Uh, do do do. You like maybe lose my track. <laughs> Sorry about that. So no no it's it's all good it's all good. Um, so yeah so so this is kind of the, the like I say the the, the multi DC approach. Um, this is live in one of our customers uh, recently. Avinash was over we, uh, and the team were over with them during some testing. They they put the, the system under heavy load before going into production. Put the system under heavy load. Shut down an entire <coughs> data center. Make sure that I/O continued. Likewise, put the system under heavy load and then did a non-disruptive upgrade. The non-disruptive upgrade for these guys was actually taking down one data center at a time rather than individual nodes. So normally in like a two or three site scenario, we'd take individual nodes down at a time. Once you get to four sites, you've got the capacity to afford losing an entire site and still have some resilience there. So they choose to do it as a site at a time in terms of the upgrades. Um, so the other side of this is, is then we can, because we are just software defined, because this is just software, the, the, although this customer is, is for physical locations that they, they sense that they own, nothing's stopping this from being different, um, replicated into different clouds. So this could be, you know, I'm European, so uh, AWS, uh, you know, Island 1 and Island 2, or Island and Frankfurt, or even AWS and Azure. So you have the single um, Hedvig cluster across all of that, your data centers and the cloud data centers, uh, and federate that out. Additionally, if you've then got read-only workloads, we can actually stand up your proxy pair and have those connecting into, again, it will choose the latency local sites. So you don't actually have to run the entire Hedvig cluster in the cloud in order to get cloud storage. So you can just run the storage proxy, which will give you access to it, and given the right levels of cache and the right workloads, effectively you'll be reading 1999% of your data locally from the caching mechanism. Any questions around that? I kind of whiz, whiz through that because we've lots of great questions, so we haven't had too much time. One thing that I would like to add uh, to be uh, to stick to sorry, I don't know your name, but Ray. Uh, Ray, to stick to your definition of synchronous, keeping the same two. You could always do that with a virtual disk with RF2 and just pick the two data centers. Yeah. yeah. And, we, and we, again, we've got customers doing that as well. Um, this is just kind of the extreme case because it's nice to whiteboard. Everyone can do two sites. Yes, we can do two sites as well. <laughs>